looking, you know, you all have like Instagram accounts, YouTube accounts, you're trying to learn uh, yeah, about 3D printing, you're trying to learn about uh, 3D design software. There's a lot. And what, I, what I've been claiming is not all of these are super valuable, right? So most of, most of that is like pretty much empty. So the question is if things are getting faster, if we can do more, uh, if there's a lot more we can access to and create, how can we make stuff that's not empty is the question. So let me get this uh, space invader out of the way first, explain what it is. Uh, so actually that's a joint detail. Okay, so we used, and it's, it wasn't on purpose, right? So uh, this is an installation that, that I designed uh, 10 years ago, almost 10 years ago now. And this is a building in uh, Santiago, Chile, right? So it's like South America. And uh, this is a design that just happened to emerge as I was drawing, you know, looking into the joint details of how to, how to put this thing together. And as you would imagine, there's not one of them, right? There's a lot, uh, many more of those. And this is pretty much a cut sheet, right? So this is what you would see uh, in a file that you're gonna send to laser cutter, right? So you're trying to kind of like save material. You're trying to reduce the time of the, you know, the laser tra traveling across the material while it's cutting and so on and so forth. And it's not alone. So this joint has also some other friends, you know, like smaller joints, which are used for some other purposes, but at the same time, some larger, let's say parts, which are essentially helping uh, in building this thing. Okay, so the idea here is uh, it's a super complicated, let's say structure. And this is somehow somewhat on purpose at the time, you know, we were trying to, okay, you know, let's try to solve this without using any sort of adhesive. So there are no glues, and there are no, let's say, screws or no nails, nothing, right? So everything is friction fit. So you have to design this in a way that it's gonna be huge. So it's taller than a human being, right? Uh, it's using plywood. So it's not a kind of like super strong structure, but at the same time, we expect this thing to just, just stand on its own by, with, with the help of those joints. So you can imagine that, you know, we went through lots of, let's say, uh, trials, errors, to tolerance check, you know, how things fit together and so on and so forth. And then once that is done, we also have a secondary layer of, uh, let's say, pockets. We call them pockets, right? So it, another structure which is creating some sort of enclosure. And these enclosing structures are, uh, you know, slightly different than each other. You will realize that uh, you, they are more, they are a tetrahedral shape, right? So it has like four faces, but it's truncated, chapped in different ways. So some of them have opening in the face uh, that's looking at us. Some of them are kind of like chopped on the corners, right? So, and also those are, let's say, uh, referring to some different functions uh, about like being enclosed or being more open. And then comes the distribution of these things, right? So every structure is, let's say, uh, you know, as wide as maybe 40, 50 centimeters or even more. And then uh, these are creating these, uh, let's say, uh, little, let's say, clusters. And then you have to distribute them uh, according to something, right? So you can define any rule here. Uh, as you're trying to design, as you have been trying to design things in the you know, basic design studio, you have to come up with rules, right? So you need to put things together and everything you kind of like put next to each other has that they have to talk to each other in a, in a way, one way or another. And in this case, we were looking at the environmental conditions. You're gonna see the building again in a moment, but you know, every, every pocket is located in a different way, different, different location within the structure and the conditions with like, you know, the light in the environment and the, you know, uh, the interaction of the people that are walking, the passersby, you know, that are walking around the structure and also the relationship interconnected relationship within the structure is different. So to represent those, we pick like, you know, RGB, red, green, and blue values, which essentially create this color. And then, you know, we, we created a corresponding configuration using the structure and the pockets in the main structure. So what, what you see uh, on the left side in the, uh, you know, green, purple colors, RGB colors is the, is the property of every pocket in the space, right? So there's a, there's a certain property that's attributed to that box. And on the right side, uh, the, the grayscale image and the purple you know, labels are showing the pocket that's corresponding to that, let's say, design rule. 
And this is pretty much essentially the, you know, the, the final result. <clears throat> so, you know, it looks, it looks pretty, pretty like complicated. It looks uh, a little bit random and so on and so forth. But this is just to say that uh, I was explaining all that to say that, okay, this is fully controlled and every part, every piece has a purpose. So this was 2012 summer, as I mentioned, and we call this, uh, uh, we call this event, actually, it was an event, a workshop. As, as synthetic natures. And the goal was to teach, you know, so there were lots of students that were coming across South America, not only Chile, who ended up learning about, you know, designing uh, this kind, these kind of like really sophisticated, uh, let's say, uh, structures. They learned about parametric design, they learned about uh, digital manufacturing, and they essentially we assembled it together, right? It took a lot of time with students to, put, you know, sit down around this thing and just put everything together. And, uh, but if you step back, as I was designing this thing, I was doing my PhD at the time, uh, and I was doing this on the side at MIT. Uh, my idea was to uh, kind of go a little against uh, free form structures, right? Because people were going crazy with particles, animations, meshing and rendering and so on and so forth. So my claim was, okay, you know, you can, you can we can slow down a little bit, not too fast, right? Step back a little bit, take very basic, you know, stuff like the platonic solids and play with them to generate some sort of generative complexity that can be utilized by using computation and parametric design. And essentially, then at the end, you will also see some LED lights in these pockets. So these pockets are uh, environments, actually they are habitats for mushrooms to live in, right? So that's the, that's the icing on the cake. Uh, so what we did was uh, we 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 placed some you know mycelium and mushroom in those pockets, and then some LED lighting in there, and the goal was this was an interactive uh, installation. So the passersby, uh, the people who are seeing the you know the the piece, they can they were able to tweet colors into those pockets, uh, and in turn actually mushrooms would tweet back. Uh, to, to people when they needed uh, water, okay? So when the humidity levels, let's say, fell below a certain level, uh, they would start to eat. So this is some sort of interaction in, you know, in which you change the color and they tweet back when they need water. It's not correlated, the needs are not correlated, but the interaction is kind of like bi-directional. Uh, it's a lot, right? So there is again, like parametric modeling, digital manufacturing and mushrooms and tweeting and you know, this and that. And uh, why, why would you do something like this is, is a question <clears throat> because there's a lot going on, right? So as a design, maybe it's not feasible. Uh, it's too complicated. There are too many parameters and so on and so forth. Uh, and, but the reason was teaching, right? So everybody who attended this workshop uh, got a chance to learn. So we had designers, we had engineers, we had uh, programmers uh, from computer science department. Uh, we, we had architects and so on and so forth. So this, this kind of a sophisticated structure gave everybody the opportunity to learn about whatever they were trying to learn. So there was, a, let's say, a, you know, beyond the physical manifestation or the construction of this thing, there was a little group which was working on making the Arduino boards at the time uh, and then, you know, programming them and so on and so forth and dealing with lights and so on. Uh, so, you know, you could be a designer who, let's say, didn't know much about that, but you were able to learn about it. Uh, so 